Uh, my name is Sean Kozak. I am the owner and head trader with Golden Zone Trading. Um, I'm going to be showing you what we do. Um, I'm not going to be telling you what we do as much as I'm going to be showing you what we do. I think that it's best if we're going to trade and we expect to actually succeed as a trader. It's not always about what someone else tells you, but it's more important about how they can actually show you how to do it yourself. Okay. Uh, I got a question here. Simon's saying no sound. Can you hear me okay? Everybody hear me okay? You're coming through fine on my end. Okay, Simon's saying no sound, so that's okay. I just want to make sure that uh, you guys can hear me okay. Excellent. Excellent, guys. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, I'm an order flow trader. I'm a supply and demand trader. I've been trading order flow for over a decade. Um, we have an open trade room for you guys to come in and take a look at. Given the fact that it is Easter weekend um, and uh, we won't, won't have the chance to show you guys anything on a Friday or a Monday this week, um, I would encourage you guys, I'm going to put my uh, website in here uh, to go to. All you need to do is go to the home page and uh, fill in your information. Come in, watch me trade. You're going to see me trade live in front of you guys. You're going to, uh, you're going to watch us navigate global markets. Uh, our room is a futures trading room, so if you're a futures trader, you'll fit right in. Um, and what I'm going to be showing you today is how we essentially break down supply and demand analysis through volume, pre volume profile breakouts and order flow and balance. Um, how many of you guys in here have ever traded supply and demand? Anybody here ever familiar with it or at least uh, heard of it, been exposed to it to some degree? Anybody here new to supply and demand or anybody ever looked at supply and demand analysis? It's always good to just kind of gauge the audience here before we get into it. A couple traders saying yes, a couple traders saying new. Can you guys let me know if you're a futures trader, if you're a stock trader, if you're a forex trader, uh, if you're a day trader? longer term swing and position trader. I always like to gauge the audience, the majority of the audience prior to doing our demonstrations, going into the frameworks and, uh, and looking at some of these things because it's always, it's always good to cater the discussions towards the audience. Futures, options, equities, Forex. So we got a mix in here. Well, the best thing for you guys is that everything we're going to be doing today is going to be showing you how to use it for stocks, futures, and Forex. So uh, there's no bias. Everything we do can be applied to any market, any time frame, any bar type, and any perspective. So if you're a day trader, a swing trader, futures, forex, equities, we can do it all, and I'm going to show you how. Uh, supply and demand and volume profile, when you combine the two, can be a very powerful combination. And I'm going to show you how to make it very easy. Um, areas, uh, Reed, I think RJ just got in here. It's GZTRJ. And uh, I believe that's him in there, Reed. If you want to bring him over, that's fine. Uh, we're going to cover a quick disclaimer. I do need to cover this as an industry-required disclaimer, guys. Golden Zone Trading has no financial interest in the outcome of your trades. There is substantial risk of loss when trading securities. So you need to determine your risk tolerance and suitability to trade them. Our products and services are for educational purposes only. So any of the recommendations that I talk about, any trades that I take, I'm going to be showing you the trading log that I keep for the trading room. Uh, any of that stuff is not to be considered as investment advice. I'm not your broker. I'm not your CTA. I'm a trader. We teach traders and we trade. Uh, it's also important to understand past performance never guarantees future results. So now that I got that stuff out of the way, guys, let's get into it. I'm going to give you a quick bio of myself, a little bit of a breakdown of how I got started, where I've been, what I've done, our team behind GZT, exactly what we do and, and how we do it. And then I'm going to go over into a very quick transition and I'll show you how to make order flow and volume easy. Um, it's been my experience, there's a lot of buzz going around in the industry about order flow and volume and, and there should be, it's what's really driving the market, uh, but the problem is a lot of traders get uh, stuck in learning it, uh, a lot of traders make things harder than it needs to be and we're going to show you how to make it very simple and very visual because myself, I'm a visual trader in our trading room, uh, everything's visual, everything from planning the trades to identifying the trade to planning reward to risk and identifying exit strategies. Everything is done in advance. So there's no guessing, there's no hindsight, there's no uh, projections of what we think is going to happen. All that matters is what we can do to the hard right edge when it's happening. And so we're going to show you how to make that easy. The, the demonstration I'm going to show you is going to be for stocks, futures, and Forex because we have a pretty good mix in here. I'm going to keep it pretty dynamic so we can show you some examples on the markets today. And then I'm going to give you an easy trading plan for supply and demand, and I'm going to walk you through a demonstration of how to actually execute trades using our primary software product, the SD Volume Zones. Uh, we do have a free trial. 
Uh, it's been my experience that uh, if you're going to be effective at something, you should never be pressured. If you think that you want to use what we do as a trader, by all means, come in, test drive it, use it while we're in the trading room next week on your free pass. If you want to come in and watch me trade, we'll give you a free trial of the software. You can come in and you can trade alongside with me and the other 200 traders in our room every morning. So the, uh, we'll give you that pass at the end of the event if you didn't get it already for the link on our home site. Okay, so my name is Sean Kozak. We covered that. I have a motto. I don't believe in fluff, snake oil, and subjectivity. There's there's a lot of stuff going on that isn't really, uh, you know, my opinion acceptable in the business. I think that uh, this is a business of risk management. It's a business of capital allocation. Um, and if you're going to be risking capital and you're going to be investing in yourself, you should at least be able to have an open door policy. So we've got a, a list of traders that would be glad to speak with you, share their experience, share their, their, uh, their results with you. Um, I'll show you our trading log right now. This is the log I keep for our room. Um, took a couple trades uh, this morning, a uh, pretty slow morning in the morning for the most part, pre-holiday trading. Uh, we were open for two hours this morning in the room and uh, this log is about 450 trades. So I started logging this log all the way back in, let's go back here, uh, last February, right? And this log is only the trades that I take in the trading room, videos, uh, everything is documented, everything is in our members area. You can go back and watch the entire year of videos and you can watch every one of these trades play out in live markets with our trading room. Um, we're very big on statistical studies, statistical uh, analytics. Uh, we like to break down strengths and weaknesses, similar to what prop firms do with regards to risk management and uh, you know being able to pick your strengths and weaknesses. I know my primary markets are the NASDAQ, crude oil, gold. Um, I know that those are my primaries, uh, not because I like them more than the others, it's because my results dictate those are my better markets, right? Um, I do trade other markets, but uh, my primary focus is on three, uh, three of the ones that I actually make the most money in, and that's where I tend to focus my time. Um, you know, we break down all the analytics. We talk about some of the things that need to make ourselves better traders, but the reality is, is that uh, it's good to demonstrate consistency through repetition and be able to track that performance and uh, essentially make sure that our students, you guys included, can, can learn from it, right? You know, logging a trade is, is only good if you're able to learn from the good and bad scenarios of what your trading is actually telling you. So these, these trades are taken every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Eastern time, so only six hours a week. And uh, it's, uh, I think we're sitting out here, let's go over here, uh, just over 175 ROI for the account since last year. So not too shabby, but uh, we'll have to get started and show you how we do it. So if you want to speak to me, if you want to speak to our traders, let me know. Send us an email. We'll give you our contact information. We'll let you uh, determine whether or not what we do is right for you. Now, I used to work in oil and gas. I went back, did a degree in finance, left the oil and gas industry years and years ago, did a securities license in Canada, similar to Series 5, Series 7 in the U.S., and then I struggled like almost every trader does at the beginning part of their career and uh, we're faced with a changing decision, right? It's either stay stuck or look at what's not working and decide how we're going to fix it. So I decided that I was going to invest everything that I could in learning what I didn't know and what I needed to know. And I was very fortunate. I, uh, I knew a friend of mine that worked in a, a private prop firm uh, and uh, you know he had some mentors that he worked with. Uh, they didn't come cheap, so I ended up investing in, in uh, some pretty expensive training, but it was the best thing that I ever did. I knew that if I was going to be a successful trader that I needed to change what I knew wasn't working for me. So I, I was taught how to trade futures and equities from uh, a former market maker who used to work on the institutional CME. Uh, I, I, I traded options and equities as well for a couple of years. I was, I was taught options by a former market maker on the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. But the best experience for me was when I traded uh, for myself working beside other traders uh, in, in a private firm. And, and to me, that was, that was the best learning experience that I ever had as a trader because uh, I was able to uh, I was able to see what other traders were doing successfully day in and day out, and I was able to actually build and test my own strategies working with very successful traders. So I was fortunate, right? I wasn't left to do it by myself, and uh, where most traders nowadays are left to uh, either join a trading room or or uh, you know work with other traders, and uh, that's what we're going to show you how to do. We're going to show you how we can give you guys that opportunity as well. 
Now, I've been trading successfully for over eight years, just under nine years now, and I'm very fortunate. We have a very large team behind Golden Zone Trading. We've got uh, four of probably the best programmers in the business that work for the NinjaTrader platform and development. We have an in-house programmer. We have an in-house support team that is also full-time traders of over 10 years. So anybody that you speak to in our company is full-time traders. We trade, we teach, we build software and test systems. That's what we do. So that's a little bit about myself, a little bit about what we do, and if you need more information on that, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. So let's jump into the fun stuff, okay? How many of you guys have ever looked at order flow? Maybe like this or maybe like that. Volume and order flow. Anybody in here ever looked at footprint analysis, ever, ever looked at volume profile analysis, okay? In reality, this is what drives the market, okay? There's, there's, uh, there's a lot of things we can use as traders. There's Fibonacci, there's GAN, there's support and resistance, there's projection levels, there's volume profile, there's high volume nodes, low volume nodes. These are all important. There's time in sales, there's, there's, uh, you know, there's the order book. It's all important, but what happens is if you're not doing it in a way that's making you money, then how really important is it, right? And that's my challenge to you, right? Because the market is driven by order flow. There's no question about it. There's either an equal side or an unequal side of order flow distribution. There's either buyers and sellers met in a market, and whenever those orders are imbalanced, they will change direction until they'll go seek out an abundance or a deficit of order flow. So the volume and the profile represents exception and rejection with regards to participation, okay? And the charts that you're looking at here, these pictures, that basically sums up what volume and order flow looks like internally. Okay? Now the problem is, is that most traders know that they need to know this stuff in order to become really successful or they need to know that if they're really going to fine tune their skill sets, they need to learn it. But where most traders get stuck is that it's very difficult if you're not shown how to do it properly. And it can be very frustrating to someone that just really wants to be shown how to place a trade for low risk and for high probability. Okay, so what we've done for years is that we've essentially taken the order flow through uh, pattern recognition, range analysis, order flow rep recognition inside the print. We've also taken volume profile, okay, and we've extracted the data so that you don't have to be bogged down by looking at stuff that can be somewhat complicating. And we've simplified it visually through supply and demand volume profile analysis. Okay, so how many of you guys would agree that the two pictures on the right would be easier to visually look at than the pictures on the left I was just showing you? Anybody here would agree with that? Gregory says yes. Doyle yes. David yes. Okay, we've got a lot of traders in here. I'm assuming you guys are still with me. Absolutely, exactly, Gene. So the reason I say this like that is because, guys, I need to keep things simple. I still need to trust what it's doing. I still need to know that internally the simplistic approach has merit. Right? You don't just want to use an indicator because somebody says you should trust this indicator. And you don't want to buy a software package because somebody told you that they're doing extremely well with it. Okay. The reality is, is that first you need to understand what it's doing and why it's relevant. And then you have to think about, okay, well, if that's the case, how can I actually use this to my advantage so that I can take a low risk trade and trade effectively more times than not? There's nothing perfect in trading. We all take losses, but our goal should not be to just make money. It should be to keep things simple so that we can do it more times than not without blowing out our accounts and being able to trust our abilities as a trader. And the reason we as traders struggle is because number one, they're driven by fear. Fear is driven by lack of confidence or lack of trust in their strategy. So in order for you to take a trade, if you're still taking a trade and you're afraid to take a trade, there is obviously an element of subconscious emotional management we all must face. But nine times out of 10, that fear is driven by either past experience of loss or the fear that if you're going to take a trade, that it's not going to work because we need to be right as traders, right? Uh, I mean, most of us try to force an unhealthy outcome. So 
the easiest way that I've been able to do it successfully, teaching thousands of traders and running a very large and successful trading room, is to keep it simple, but also understand that that simplistic approach is using very complicated data internally, and we've designed it in a way that makes it easier to trade. Okay, let's talk about why this is important. When the market goes up, it goes up because there's an abundance of buy order flow in the print being executed in the time of sales. That's it, that's all. There's an abundance of buyers. The buying sentiment in the market is to the bull side of the market. That could be on different time frames. The perspective could be different, right? What's bullish on, a, on an intraday scalping chart is definitely not bullish on a long-term swing and position chart, and then vice versa to the bear side of the market. But the reality is, is that when the market stops and turns, it doesn't stop and turn because we thought it would go to this price level and we called it to the tick and we said, okay, I think the market's going to go here and I think the market's going to go there. The market stops is because there's a change in order flow. There's an abundance in order flow going in one direction, then all of a sudden it stops and goes in the other direction. And the reason it stops, let me grab a cursor here so I can show you. Okay, If we take this example right here. Okay. If we remove all the zones and the images and the text from this picture, the reason the market stopped right here is because as the buyers bought the market up, bought the market up, eventually it got to a place where there was no more buyers and there was actually more sellers than buyers at that price level. That's it. That's all, guys. It just goes up. And then when there's no more buyers to support that direction, because it's met with an opposing side of sellers in the print, in the order flow, it stops and it goes back down. And it's going to go back down until it finds buyers to support the price level. And as the market goes all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, it stops. And the reason it stops, not because it hit a fib, not because it hit a wave three, an Elliott wave, not because it did all this and there was a Gartley pattern. It's all valid, guys. That's all subjective information. What's really important is what's going on internally inside order flow. The market makers are pairing order flow from institutions and funds and retail traders from the buy side and the sell side of the market all the time. And we need to make sure that we address one very simple statement. We don't compete against institutions. There's no competition. The institutions control the market. Retail traders do not play in the same level as them. They're going to drive the market to where they want to control the order flow and where they can move prices, they can leverage in, they can scale in. I know this because I've worked with institutional traders. In reality, as a retail trader, though, we don't use the same platforms as they do. We don't have access to the same data as they do. So all that's important is to understand where we can see what they're doing visually and represent that on our price charts. So when the market turns and it stops, and when the market turns and it stops, it's not because we think it's going to, it's because there's actually an abundance or a distributional change in order flow and volume. Now the SD volume zones, which you see on our chart, these are zones. These are driven from executed order flow distribution, so it's basically looking at executed order flow that's taken in the print, and then it's also looking at pattern recognition, and then it's wrapping volume profile in these areas. So whenever a level of supply is created, okay, it's because we had volume profile and order flow support the breakout in these areas, and then it projects these price levels, because what the software is doing is it's going to say, okay, at this price level, we had a volume profile distribution breakout and order flow supported that that was sellers that created that at that price level. And then as the market came down and it stopped and then it went back up, the reason it stopped and went back up is because buyers were supporting price levels with volume at that location because there was now an abundance of demand order flow in the executional order flow. There's, there's, there's demand in the market by you, by me, by funds, by big traders, by all the people around the world that are buying or selling the market. And what happens, our software identifies that and it basically supports this through volume profile analysis so that when we print demand, when we print supply, it's because the bigger traders are proving that's demand or supply. Guys trading one lots and 10 lots and even 15 and 20 lots are not moving the market, right? So it's important to understand what this is telling us. Now, what I need to do now is I need to explain why these zones are created because, yes, it looks great. Sean, you've drawn some circles on a chart and you've told me that this is supply and this is demand and we should look at that's where the market's supposed to turn. But 
why should I trust that? That should be the question that you ask yourselves, not because I'm speaking in an event. I'm a trader just like you guys, so I'm going to speak to you guys like traders. right? We need to know what's going on internally so we understand what's happening for the software to create that. Okay? You'll see black candles on your chart right here or on this image of a chart. Okay? Now, these black bars are looking at executed order flow in the print. Okay? Right here, right here, right down here, right down here. Without having to look at a whole bunch of numbers and a whole bunch of noise and a whole bunch of stuff that we know is important, but it makes really hard sense to understand it. Okay? So if your goal is to make trading a simple process, but using tools that are looking at the things that you know you need to look at, then this is going to be for you. Okay? The black candles identify what we call an order flow imbalance between supply and demand in the print. So what it's doing is it's looking internally at executed time and sales data and, and pattern recognition in order flow. And it's basically coloring the candles when that happens. And then what happens after the black bar is very important. Because when you see a red fluorescent bar or a green fluorescent bar here or here, what that tells us is that as we have an abundance in order flow either to the buy or the sell side of the market, the candle after that's what's proving that breakout interns, internally with volume profile. So what we're doing is we're looking internally in the order flow, inside the print, inside the candles, and then as the bar that comes after the black candle turns fluorescent red, if this candle closes a red fluorescent bar, that means that we broke outside of the volume profile into this supply imbalance, and that proves that that is supply created from volume and order flow. Not because we see the market going down that, okay, there must be supply there. The market has to prove there's supply there before us to be able to look at that as an objective way to place a trade in these locations later on. Okay. Now, as the market comes down here, there was demand here, but we chewed through it. And as the market came down here, black candle, the bar after it, as the market's going up and down, this candle is going to be changing color. It's going to be black. It's going to be green. It's going to be red, depending on the order flow and the volume. But as soon as it closes a green thrust bar, we call these thrust bars because in order for us to have a thrust, we need to break outside of volume. As soon as that candle closes a green thrust bar, this zone will print, project to the hard red edge of your chart so that when we get back there, you can look to establish a position based off where volume profile and order flow prove there's buyers. Now, for those of you that are wondering about the volume, if you've ever looked at volume profile, excuse me, if you've ever looked at any type of volume studies, the Cliff Notes version of volume is we have a profile inside of supply and inside of demand because everything else internally here is outside of where we're really focusing on. And what we've got is we've got the point of control, which is your highest point of volume, value area low, value area high. We've got what we call a volume cluster, which tells us where the bulk of the volume is, not just on the one price level, but the bulk of the volume in these price levels, so that we can use this volume to paint a picture of where we'd expect prices to react and where they'd be accepted and rejected in demand and supply when price returns there for a trading opportunity. Okay, So that's a brief overview of what we can do with regards to supply and demand and volume analysis. But what I'd like to do now is I'd like to spend the remainder of the event um, going over live charts. Dennis is asking what time frames are these candles. Uh, it, it doesn't matter the candles, actually, Dennis. I'm going to show you. We're going to look at several markets. And as I mentioned, all markets, chart types, and time frames. So you don't have to trade on the same time frames as I do. right? You don't have to trade the same markets as we do. You might be a Forex trader. You might be a stock trader. Right? That doesn't mean you can't make really good trades using the tools we use just because we trade different time frames or different markets. Okay, Let me go in here and let's take a look at some of the markets. Okay, I'm going to ask you guys, which market would you like me to look at? Futures, Forex, or stocks? And I've got the ES on a 5-minute. I've got the NASDAQ on a 244 tick. I've got the YM on a 1,000 volume, and I've got crude on a Renko chart. I've also got the Euro at USD on a range bar, and I've got Amazon on a daily chart for those of you that are, are stock traders or swing in position. Okay? So we've got some stocks, we've got some Forex. Okay. 
first let me do this. Let me show you how the software works, then we'll look at some markets. Okay. So let's say we're looking at a price chart. Okay. You can say, okay, we're going down. Okay, we got a downtrend. Okay, we got an uptrend. That's fine. Okay, it stopped here, 2012. It came down here. All that stuff is just the noise of the market. The SD volume zones is a visual dropdown that allows us to control all the different features inside of the software. Okay, so when we go in here, we have the, the ability to turn supply and demand on or off. Okay, so the whole concept here is to be able to also go back and take a look at previous levels that were created in the market and what happened at those areas and which ones are valid trades and which ones aren't valid trades. And knowing that all we need to do is know how to control the analysis for us to look at supply and demand. Okay. And what we can also do is we can look at profile features. We can turn the profiles on and off inside of supplier demand. We have the ability to go in here and actually um, you know, show a volume internally at these areas. Now this is an ES on a five minute chart. Okay, and you'll notice this afternoon we had a pretty bullish run in the afternoon after lunchtime. And you'll notice that the zones, let me just delete this for a second, let me just make it easier to see. Okay, this zone right here was created by two black bars, let me put the candles in front of it here. Two black bars and a green thrust. At the close of that thrust, let's just do this right here. At the close of that candle, price created this demand zone. Why? Because the software looked at the order flow in here, and this candle validated a volume profile breakout. So if price comes back down here, this would bear you, you want to establish a long trade. Okay, now let's go back up here and take a look. This is another. Didn't quite get down there. Buyers are really buying this market up. Okay, we're sitting up here now. If we go back and take a look earlier today, Let's go in here and find broken zones. I'm going to turn broken zones because broken zones were what was here this morning. Okay. Now the key here is to, to understand is that you don't want to be buying demand when the market's going down. You want to be selling supply. You want to be selling the market when there's a lot of sellers. And you want to be buying the market when there's a lot of buyers. We want to keep things simple. Okay. But let's just turn demand off for a second. And let's just look at the supply side of the equation. Let's say you're coming in here pre-market, 8.30 Eastern time. You're coming in here starting to look at the, the equity indexes before, okay, before the U.S. Open. Yeah, Brian, we'll look at the change in trend. We'll take a look at, uh, at, at directional trading here in just a moment. I just want to explain the concept of what's happening as to why prices are reacting in certain areas. Okay? So this is pre-market on the ES. Okay, this is pre-market on the ES. And you'll notice here that we had a black bar, and then the candle came right after it, red thrust bar. At the close of that red thrust bar, this supply zone printed to the hard right edge of your chart. So we're, let's just pretend we're like this, okay? So now the software is telling us, okay, internally, there's a volume profile breakout between these price levels between 2015, 25, and 2016. Okay. Now the goal here is to understand why this is important, because most traders have a hard time understanding risk management and position sizing. They know they need it, and we've all been told that it's important to have a trading plan, and you need to understand risk and reward, and you need to understand position sizing. Those statements are true, but if you're trading a strategy or if you're trading a system that you have no idea from one trade to the next or one uh, day to the next, how to qualify and quantify your risk management on a trade-by-trade -trade basis like clockwork without guessing and doing it following a rules-based approach, right? We need to make sure that every time you make a trade, those trades are following structure, not not just because I think today I'll trade it like this and then tomorrow I'll trade it like that or it worked for me in the past, maybe I'll do this. When we look at supply and demand analysis, we have the ability, okay, we have the ability to essentially 
cap our risk every single time. Every single time. So what we're doing here is we're identifying is this is your risk right here. So if price comes back up to supply, your stop loss goes a couple ticks above because if supply fails to hold, you're out for a defined amount of risk and your entry is at the edge of supply. It doesn't get more mechanical than that. And we have, the, we have enough time to wait for price to come back up there to establish a trade. So the short is here if price gets back. And our stop loss goes two ticks or one tick above the level so that if supply can't hold, then you're out for a small stop. You're out for a defined amount of risk. Now, this allows you to look at how much risk you take, which will also help you define your position sizing. And you can qualify how much you need for one-to-one, two-to-one, three-to-one reward to risks, depending on your trading plan. Okay. Ronald's saying no sound. Is everybody else still hear me okay? I want to make sure I don't continue to speak unless everybody still has audio. Everybody's got audio? Excellent. Excellent, guys. Okay, so is everybody with me on this? I just want to break down the anatomy of how we look at trades and how we can identify this as supply. And if we're in a downtrending market, we want to be selling supply. If we're in an uptrending market, we want to be buying demand. But this happened this morning pre-market after the news came out this morning. And then watch what happened off supply here. I'm just going to move this so you guys can see it. Okay. Price came down. The entry is here. Okay, the entry is here. Price came all the way back down. Now, I want to show you something here. This is why knowing where supply and demand is important. Okay, this was a big area of demand in here. So this would have been a tough area to trade. However, take a look at this next area up here. If we get back up here, let's wait and see what's going to happen. Watch what happens. I'm going to remove this zone for a second. Watch what happens when price gets up here. We're going to wait. Take a look where it goes to. Now, I want to explain to you why it stops here. It doesn't stop here because random acts in the market happen. It stopped there because in the past, at this area, okay, the software looked internally in order flow and volume, and it proved that there was a volume profile breakout, okay? Volume profile breakouts happened at that area confirmed by volume and order flow analysis. We've just been able to visually represent that through zoning methodology so we can make it easier for us to make low risk trading decisions without having a bunch of noise on the chart, without having to complicate the process. Now what's really important here, okay, is the risk is here. And we don't have demand until way down here. So even if you're looking, even if you're looking at a reward to risk ratio. So let me see here. Greg says, yeah, OTA folks on small demand zones, but yeah, the problem with that is it's all based off price action only. There's no volume or or order flow internals qualifying levels. So it's all manual. This is automated internally. And I'm very familiar with that. Now let me take a look at this. Note this is an example also shows that the first retracement trade uh, would have failed. How would you know which level is the one to trust? Charles saying. So you're saying the first retracement trade? Explain to me the retracement trade. This level did not fail. Right here, this one worked. It came all the way down here to 20, near 2012. Reward to risk would have been about three to one on that trade. Okay, so if you're looking at this, if you're shorting supply here, the market came all the way down here before breaking through that area. Depends on your target. But the whole concept here is if you're risking this much, okay, you can identify how much you need for reward to risk. Now personally, when I see a supply or demand zone in between each other, I don't like to trade that because I don't have any room for profit. I don't have any breathing room for the market to come down. This scenario, different story. Take a look at this. Price came up into supply and I have no demand until way down here. Right, no demand. So that's almost three to one reward to risk right here within that five minute candle. Okay. 
Price came back up, touched it for a retest, came back down. Okay, and then it formed demand on this bar. Okay, now let's go to a different example. Let's make it easier to see it. Let's take a look at this. This is a volume chart on the YM. As I said, it doesn't matter which market you're trading, what time frame, what type of analysis you like to prefer trading on. I want to basically go and put broken zones on for a second. Okay, take a look at this. This maps out the day for today. We had a nice downtrend. Price came back up, tested down here, but then we come back in this big push up. Okay. We didn't get any demand order flow tested in here. We didn't get a chance to trade this level. This level's still been untouched. But take a look at this. This happened here going into the close this afternoon. So depending how long you trade, okay, depending how long you trade in the day, you can look at trading in the afternoon or in the morning, that type of stuff. But take a look at this. At the close of this thrust bar, this demand zone printed. Okay. So the entry is when price comes back down to touch demand, your stop loss goes a couple ticks below it, and we have the ability to see above where's the supply. Okay. When there's supply above us, we can see that if the market's going to come down and hold in demand, we can plan our exits before we ever take the trade. I'm not sure how many of you guys are trading in this type of a fashion or like to know what you're doing before you get into the market. Personally, I never take a trade unless I know how I'm getting out of the market before getting into the market. I need to know if I'm going to get into the market, I don't want to have to guess on how I'm going to manage that trade while I'm in the trade. I want to know in advance what I'm doing. So that puts me now into a state of being proactive rather than reactive. Trading should not be about guessing what to do on the fly. It should be about knowing how to trade your plan in advance and stack probabilities. Okay? And the reason I trust trading the levels is because I've been trading them for a very long time and I know how they're created. I know what it's doing internally. I know what it's looking for in terms of order flow and volume analysis. Now, if we take a look here, guys, let's do this. If I extend the profile like this, I'm going to show you what's doing this. It came down. You see that pink line? I'm going to put the zones in front. That pink line is the value area high. That yellow line is the point of control in volume. So if prices are going to come down, it's going to be attracted to high volume areas. Price comes to high volume because price tends to trade in high volume for longer periods of time, and it rejects out of low volume areas. So price came down, tagged the point of control, and it's coming down into here where there's less volume below the profile. Okay, let's take a look at this. What happens? It comes in. That's the close. Okay, that's trading into the close. Now, I'm not suggesting you trade into the close. It doesn't matter where we look at. Let's just go back and take a random place on the chart doesn't matter what we're looking at. All I know is that you need to have a directional bias and you need to know how to trade the levels in terms of direction. And I'm going to show you that mini plan here in just a moment because we're going to go through a trade. We're going to walk you through a trade. Okay? You can see how the level stops supply. It breaks down. Right? The, the name of the game is when do I buy demand and when do I sell supply? That is the number one question. Once you have that answer, then you just plan your levels based off supply and demand analysis and you plan your trade. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what it did pick up, Simon, on Amazon. If you go back, I'll give you a webinar recording from last two weeks ago. We were coming in, Amazon was trading about here, and then the day of the event we had, Amazon was doing this. It was coming into the supply zone at 579.03. Right? This was back here towards the end of February. Okay. We were trading that day on this candle, and I said to everybody in the room, I said, guys, if you're a swing trader and you're trading Amazon on the daily chart, this is definitely an area where you're going to want to get short the market. Okay. And then it took into supply. Okay. Came into supply. Right now, that's a forty. That's a forty-dollar move in Amazon. My exit, if I was shorting this my exit would have been here. Not the whole move. My exit would have been at 560. Entered around 575, 14, my exit would have been around 560 because that's where demand is. And then what happened as soon as it came back down into demand, okay, hit demand to the, to the tick, right into the profile, 
came through it and right up to supply. Okay. I don't swing trade equities anymore. I don't swing trade the stock market anymore. Okay. Let's take a look at the Euro USD. We got four X traders in here. Okay. Now, this is a Euro on a five range. You might not trade it on a five range, but I can pick any bar, any market, any time frame, and I'll show you how to trade it. That's 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 without a doubt. All right, let's go in here and take a look at this. Okay, this is this morning. Take a look what happens. Came into demand in here, caught several bounces out of demand. Take a look at this. It came down in here. Okay. To the tick. This candle closed, opened, came down, retested it to the tick. There's a reason it stops to the tick here, guys. It's not because the market's just doing random things. It's because there's an abundance of order flow and volume profile breakout happening right here. Price comes down to retest that area, and then it came down for a second test of volume. And where did it stop? This is important. Give it a second here. Hey, Sean, don't mean to interrupt, but you got about five minutes remaining. Okay. Right. This right here, it stops right here. Okay, and it comes in here, and it retests it. Bounce out of it. That's just Forex. Okay, so let me give you a mini trading plan. At the top of your screen, you guys should have you guys should have the ability, okay, to take a screenshot. The biggest thing for trading, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Brian. It says it's almost like having the answer to the test beforehand. There appears to be a lot of confluence when considering other exactly. So the first thing you want to do, I encourage everybody right now to take a screenshot of this if you can. The first step is you want to identify directional bias. Okay. You want to scan for the demand zone or the supply zone. You want to look at your reward to risk entry and then you want to manage the trade. Okay. Let me take a quick second. Let me close this down. I've got about five minutes. I should be able to do the demonstration in under five minutes. Let me show you this. Let's close this. Okay. I'm going to disconnect from data. And I'm going to show you how to do this in, in, in a replay formation. Uh, there, and we're going to just go to today's date. This happened today on the Russell. I just chose this because it's just a good example of what to do and how to do it. Okay, 10.23 a.m. on the Russell. I'm just going to create a chart. I'm going to show you how to do this. We're going to play it through step by step because I'm a visual trader, and if I can show you how to do it, it's easier than just telling you what to do. I'm just going to load a chart. Okay. So remember I said step one in the rules is identify directional bias. Now, a lot of traders use trend I tend to use momentum first because momentum tends to shift direction prior to a trend developing. I want to get into the move prior to a trend forming, right, and then catch the continuation in the trend once a trend proves itself. So what I want to do here, I'm just going to load an ATM strategy. Make sure I got an ATM selected. Okay. And just real simple, the first rule of the, the trading plan is when I have a long bias, I want to buy demand. When the momentum is up, I'm going to buy demand zones. When momentum is down, I'm going to sell supply. Very simple, very straightforward, very easy to understand, very rules-based. right? You don't want to sell supply when you have positive momentum. You don't want to be buying demand when you have negative momentum. Okay. So step one is identify. Step two is if I know I'm looking to go long the market, I want to buy a demand zone. Well, we have a demand zone right here. My risk, max risk on this area would be if I entered right at the edge of that demand zone. And if I'm getting long in here and this supply zone holds, I want to take my first exit here. It's about a one and a half reward to risk ratio. Okay. So what you do is you establish your trades in advance. You plan where you're planning your execution prior to it ever getting there so that you're not reacting to the market as it's happening putting you to a state of being reactive. Now you're being proactive. Now I've mapped out my, my exit, I've mapped out my risk, and all that has to happen 
is I just wait for the trade to take its course. If the market comes down, great. If it doesn't and it forms new demand, okay, then I'll play the next level. I'll trade the next area. As long as I can see that the market, okay, I'm going to pause it. We have the ability to adjust targets and stops while the market's moving, okay? And this happened this morning. This is 10.28 this morning on the Russell, okay? And all that matters is that you manage your trade for risk management, okay? So let me do this. I don't want to take too much of your time, guys. I appreciate you letting me come in here and share my experience and sharing you some of the things that we do. As I mentioned, I trade live order flow and supply and demand analysis every single week in our room, okay? First thing I want you to do is you owe it to yourself, okay? You owe it to yourself to come in and at least see visually how we trade, okay? Wednesday and Thursday next week after the Easter weekend, after everybody's enjoyed a holiday break with their family, goldenzonetrading.com, just go to the home site, sign up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a link. This link is a free trial link. So I'm going to give you a free trial to the software. Okay. And I should be done here in just a moment here, Reed. I'm just going to give him some links and explain the promotion. If you click on that link and fill in your information, okay, let me show you real quick how it works. Does everybody see here? Pick your trader, pick your market, and hit download now. Wednesday and Thursday next week, Brian. When you click that submit button, it's going to bring you to a page. I want you to save this page to your desktop so that you can install the software. There's a video for installation. There's an installer for that. There's a usage and settings video. There's a user manual. So that you can basically take a look at some of the stuff over the weekend if you have time after you're spending time with your friends and family. And then you'll be ready to join us next week in the room. Okay. Now let me pull up the slides so you can understand the costs associated with the tools that we're using. And then we'll be able to shut things down for the day and uh, carry on. Okay, let me do this. Let me pull it up here. Okay. So you don't have to purchase today. No pressure, guys. If you think you think you like what we do here and you, you see merit in it, I encourage you to come take a look at it. Normally, we retail the software at fifteen hundred per two computers. Okay. And you'll be able to use that software for life, no update costs, no renewal fees, and, and then we'll give you a guest pass to our trading room. Now, because it's Easter weekend and tomorrow's a holiday and Monday's a holiday, um, we recommend installing the trial on Monday or Tuesday so you can take advantage of your, your trial properly while the markets are open. Okay? And we're going to run this promotion until Thursday next week. Okay? So you can get a chance to come in on Wednesday and Thursday, watch me trade live markets, if you need assistance with installation, there's the email, support at goldenzonetrading.com, or you can go to our website, and you can get in touch with us, and you can have RJ log on your computer. We'll install the software with you. We'll make sure you can use it, okay? Should you want to take advantage of purchasing, we'll give you a coupon code. We'll send you an email out. All you need to do is install the trial, and then you'll receive the details with that before Thursday next week, and then we can use this together, and you can come trade with us ongoing. Anybody that purchases the zoning software will give you an extended pass to our trading room. Okay? The trial is three days, so you'll be able to trial it for three days. So if you install it on a Monday, you'll have access to it until Thursday. If you install it on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you'll be able to take advantage of it all week next week. Okay? So hopefully you enjoyed the presentation, traders. I appreciate you letting me come in and share my experience. Reed, I want to appreciate uh, you guys having us in here, and hopefully you guys seen some value in what we showed you guys today.